applications of ER, enhanced oil recovery technologies, including CO2 and chemical injection according to the specific needs of the aging reservoirs. Increased drilling of horizontal and directional wells that will certainly help increasing the recovery factor. <clears throat> now we turn into the human resources. Recruitment and development of best human resources is the most critical component in the implementation of our 2030 strategy. Qualified and skilled human resources are required to implement our projects with the highest technical, environmental, and safety standards. We have reached our recruitment stretch targets in the last two years. In order to secure such, re <clears throat> such resource, we are targeting ourselves to become the employer of choice in this region by providing a highly performance-oriented work environment <clears throat> that motivates and supports development of the company leadership and our technical capabilities. A comprehensive training program, which are programs which are under implementation to, to develop both technical and managerial capabilities. A monitoring a mentoring program to ensure that knowledge is transferred from the most experienced to the new generation in KOC. We have a very strong focus on the continuous improvement of HSSE standards. A full implementation of health, environment, safety, and security management system is in place to achieve safest and cleanest operations. We have achieved significant reduction in gas flaring and CO2 emissions. We are ready to achieve 1% gas flaring target in this coming fiscal year, 2012-2013. And we will continue to improve to reduce gas flaring the minimum operational feasible. We are seeking to establish proper ventures to improve CO2 capture and sequestration technologies from all major stationary CO2 sources in Kuwait. Last but not least, we are strongly committed to contribute to enterprise and the state of Kuwait by creating job opportunities in the country, building the level of Kuwaiti manpower with the relevant expertise needed, providing healthcare services through the Ahmadi Hospital, contributing to education in the Kuwaiti, to the Kuwaiti young people, including provision of scholarships, contributing and supporting several initiatives that improve the infrastructure and municipality services in the state of Kuwait. With this, I, like, I would like to thank you for your attention and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sami. Um, it was a very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Um, I think that uh, it's better to wait until the end of the session to, to raise the question uh, in order to have the global picture of uh, what is going to, to be brought by uh, uh, KOC, what is going to, to be brought uh, to, to the contribution of the production uh, um, by QGOC, and also the, the potential on the heavy oil. So uh, let me introduce you for the second uh, lecture um, uh, Mr. Hashim uh, Mustafa Rifai. Uh, Hashim is the, the chairman of uh, Kuwait Gulf Oil Company. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering uh, from the University of Seattle in 1980. He has accumulated over 32 years of uh, diversified experience in the Kuwaiti oil and gas sector 
and his career encompassed numerous leadership positions, including a deputy managing director of a Kuwait oil company, managing director for planning uh, uh, at KPC, and chairman of the board of, uh, and managing director of the oil development company. Um, I've seen in the, the pictures uh, and the slides uh, uh, from uh, uh, Sami Arushade that uh, KOC will contribute uh, up to 3.5 uh, million barrels per day, so I suspect that um, Hashim will, uh, will provide the uh, 500,000 uh, barrels uh, left over. So le let us uh, see how you will do, do that, Hashim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lionel. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be here, and I do thank the organizers for inviting me, as well as uh, for doing such an immaculate job in organizing and in their hospitality. The offshore exploration in the GCC commenced in 1949 and was led to many significant discoveries. The most important one perhaps is the Safania discovery, the world's largest offshore oil field, and that was discovered in 1951. Nobody found anything bigger since then. The Brazilians think they are finding something similar. The world's largest gas field, the North Field in Qatar, was discovered in 1971. In my presentation today, we will review various aspects and challenges that are particular to the offshore environment in terms of exploration and their production, as well in the, as in their activities and their major projects. Firstly, we will compare the marine environment with that of land in terms of obvious differences in operational challenges and also in terms of the more subtle challenges of the subsurface geology as we move through the Arabian offshore throughout the Gulf. This slide shows the geological cross-section from southwest to northwest across the onshore and the offshore Arabian platform and the Zaglas Mountains of Iran. The stable Arabian platform extends the onshore area across the Gulf. The offshore area shares the same petroleum system throughout, with the same source rock observed onshore, the same reservoir, the same seal pairs, and the same structural developments. The north-south trending Arabian fold that forms, for example, the onshore of Gawar field, the Bahrain structure, and extends into the Arabian Gulf, where they are responsible for the formation of the fields like Safania and Khafji in Saudi Arabia, as well as the Qatar's North Field. Operationally, of course, the offshore environment is very different than that of onshore. Exploration, developmental drilling, and production costs are much higher, whereas the acquisition costs are significantly reduced. Also, the quality of the seismic data recorded in the marine environment tends to be much better quality because the near surface zone is much more consistent than that that you can get when you do seismic on land, making seismic processing much less expensive. This leads to greater accuracy in the location and exploration of development wells, more robust static reservoir models, and thus greater efficiency and reduced costs in both exploration and development activities. 